What is up my blushing glam? Saka fit for me. It's your girl blush and I'm back with another video. Y'all, this is my first sit down video since I have had my baby. So first video postpartum. Um, so hopefully I can get through this while he's, you know, he's not even napping, but he's doing his thing over there. So I'm gonna try to get through this video. Um, those of you who are returning, welcome back. And if this is your first time checking into my video, welcome again, my name is Blush. At my channel, you're pretty much gonna find lifestyle videos, um, vlogs, you're gonna find out videos about fashion, beauty, and for my boss babes, you're gonna get some financial advice. Today, we're gonna be doing a sit down video, um, really because again, this is my first video after having a baby. I wanted to kind of share some things that I've picked up along the way um, to my mamas to be, those who are thinking about having babies, um just things that kind of help make things a little bit more easier for me now this is my second child so some of these things are things that i did first time as well and then there are some things some new things that i've actually picked up along the way um just kind of like watching tiktok or just things that i feel like would have helped me so hopefully i don't miss out on some things i know that there's some items that i don't have here so i'll probably mention them and try to link them or give you a picture but i don't want to waste a lot of time because again we're pressed on time you know with baby timing you're yeah anyways let's get started oh yeah and if you're new i'm sure you're gonna like this channel so you might as well just go ahead and click that subscribe button let's get going all right so i'm gonna go ahead and just start off with some prenatal things so things that you would probably want to do before um your actual pregnancy like if you're thinking about it um so some things that i think that you should probably do beforehand and then some things that you do while you're pregnant and then we're going to go into the um the postpartum stuff so before you get pregnant um and while you're pregnant i believe that so um before you get pregnant you want to make sure that your body is fit for your pregnancy especially when you're getting older in age um your your body is aging just as much as your the number of your age so you want to make sure that you are being healthy so eating right exercise and you're and working on your stress level on uh, making sure that you're getting enough sleep um those are kind of like the main things that you're looking at so um in addition to eating right you want to definitely look into your supplements so if you and your your partner your spouse or whatever decided okay we want to get pregnant um first thing i would definitely look into doing um is looking at your stuff what supplements you're taking talk to your doctor of course so you can see what works for you what you need for your body because sometimes there are things that you're lacking um so later on in my pregnancy i found out that i was lacking iron so i had to actually in addition to my prenatal supplement iron um get iron supplements and then also eat food that was rich in iron, so my greens and things like that. Um, but anyways, you wanna definitely pick up a prenatal. You can get prenatals almost anywhere. Walmart, Walgreens, CVS, your, you know, your neighborhood pharmacy store, um, or if you wanna talk to your, your doctor about what prenatals would work better for you, definitely do that. But I would definitely invest in getting a good prenatal, especially one that has um, folic acid and DHA. Now, if you don't have the folic acid and DHA, you can always um, add it to whatever your prenatal is. Or if you want to just do like a regular one, like before you get pregnant, you want to do like a one a day supplement for women, go ahead and do so. It's also important that your partner is also making sure that they're taking some good supplements as well, because don't forget, it takes an egg and a sperm to, to make a baby. So if their body and the, the sperm that they're giving out is not quality sperm, those are things that you're gonna have to deal with as well. So make sure that your your partner is also being healthy. You know, you guys are not like taking drugs. Um, you know, if you drink, make sure it's, it's like something that's casual. Um, just not taking anything that would affect your body and affect the baby in it, you know, in the long term. But um, yeah. So um, I also had D D3, um, which is good for immunity. Um, it's also good for bone. So I also added that to my regimen. Um, so before I got pregnant with my son, um, 
I had another, you know, another episode, another scenario before, so I had to actually take, um, when I spoke with my, the OBGYN that I had at that time, um, they recommended that I take, well, I continue taking prenatals and D3 and also something called CoQ10, um, which again, when you're up in age, there's certain things that you have to do a bit extra so you can make sure that you have healthy pregnancies and also a healthy baby. So I don't have the CoQ10 now, they're pretty expensive. And I ran through like three or four bottles of those, um, you know, prior to my pregnancy and then also during my pregnancy. But definitely I'll try to like, you know, put post a picture here for you guys or link with either one so you guys can see what I'm talking about. Um, <clears throat> now I actually took this during my pregnancy um, but you know, it's also considered a prenatal. It's something I found online again when I was trying to look for something. I forget what it was I looking for, but I came across this, and it's pretty much like it's a protein. It's pretty much a protein shake. Um, I think I spoke about this in a video before. You can add this as like you know part of your breakfast. Um, you put your favorite milk, your favorite fruit in there, and like one scoop of this a day and you pretty much get um, most of the, the nutrients that you need. It's supposed, according to this, it's supposed to help with morning sickness. It's supposed to be, um, I would say, uh, organic. If not, it's gluten-free, soy-free, non-GMO protein. Um, no artificial sweeteners, hormone-free, no preservatives. So all that good, all that good jazz. Um, you get your vitamin D, iron, calcium, potassium, vitamin C, sodium is pretty low. Uh, folate, phosphorus, but you can get there. I mean, there's other brands, but this is the one that I picked up. Um, but this is, I, I know we weren't quite in during pregnancy, but because we we're talking about prenatals, I thought I'd just um, pick this up. But yeah, so the main thing, pre like prior to you getting pregnant, because most of us probably aren't planning to get pregnant, we just happen to get pregnant. But if you are planning to get pregnant, definitely invest in a good prenatal. Um, supplements talk to your your OB or your doctor about you know things that you may need get your blood work done um, you know stay on top of your exercises and things like that now I think we're safe to kind of start going into once you find out that you're pregnant so once you find out that you're pregnant you want to make sure again that you have a good OB um, OBGYN um, and that you have a good relationship with that OBGYN now um, with me and I'll probably talk about this throughout the video because it touches bases in all three areas. Um, when I had Odiria, I took the natural route, which honestly, it was scary, but I loved I loved the experience, especially when I compare it to when I had my son, which my son's name is Messiah, in case you guys don't know. Um, when I had Messiah, I or when I decided I was gonna have Messiah, because again, the episode that I had before, right before him, um, and again, I'm not, uh, you know, a young whippersnapper. Okay, so when we found out that we were pregnant with Messiah, um, I had decided that I, as much as I wanted to go the natural route, like I did with Oderia, um, we decided that, okay, just to be on the safe side, I'm a little older than I was when I had Oderia, plus the episode that I had right before, find out that we were pregnant with Messiah, we figured that, you know, going the, like, the hospital route might be the best thing um there was some pros and cons in going through the hospital route i mean nothing bad i'd do it again but to be honest if i had to choose between going the natural route and going the hospital route i'd probably choose going the natural route again but anyways once we found out um i you know took the test and everything i decided to look up a OBGYN that pretty much had attributes that was close to um, like a natural route um, there wasn't a lot around here um, so the next best, next best thing was to choose a uh, black and a female OBGYN again that's my preference you don't have to do it like I did but that's what I did in other words I'm trying to tell you to do your research and figure what works for you in your situation when you're figuring out um, your OBGYN because this is who's gonna be with you along the whole process and just kind of walking you through your pregnancy. It doesn't matter if this is your fifth pregnancy or your first pregnancy, every pregnancy is different and you wanna make sure that your experience is a good one. Um, so anyways, uh, once you figured out all of that, you've gone, you started to go to your appointments and things like that, 
um, once you start, uh, of course, again, prenatals, definitely important, through, you know, when you find out you're pregnant, um, so you want to continue with that. Um, as you start getting closer to, you know, like maybe five or six uh, months, um, you know, you've already done your ultrasounds and all that good, all that jazz. Um, you want to continue with your water. Oh, which reminds me, reminds me when I was about five months, I had a little scare. Um, about five or six months, I had a little bit, a little scare. Um, I was cramping, which, you know, I have fibroids, so cramping throughout any given time is not a normal avenue for me, but of course, when you're being, when you're pregnant, you want to pay attention to those things. But, um, I was cramping and the cramping wasn't going away, so I don't, you know, uh, drunk tea and things like that that didn't help so um when the day had turned into evening and the cramping did not stop i had my husband take me to the hospital and um the er and you know they were making sure everything was okay come to find out i was actually contracting that early in my pregnancy which was kind of scary for me um so apparently when you when your uterus has things going on in it that it's not used to um, <clears throat> it's it's going to go ahead and um, and start to contract so any little thing so like even if you have a like, yeast infection even if you have BV even if you um, whatever you may have that your, your, your body is not used to it's gonna start doing the contracting thing the other thing also is that if you're dehydrated um, you can actually cause yourself to go into like contraction and possibly even early um, to kind of go into having this early labor okay um, these are things again that I had to learn along the way so I was told to you know continue drinking my water and keep myself healthy and um, so I was figuring like okay I was drinking water so I'm guessing the water intake that I was doing wasn't enough or maybe the water wasn't really hydrating me so I started to look into other ways to kind of like add things to my water to help me hydrate so um I was gonna do the liquid IV but I was kind of nervous because I wasn't sure if it was kind of healthy for the baby and things like that so uh, one day I was walking with Odiria looking for something for her to wear in a plaza there was a GNC went in there and I actually came across this which is a uh, plant-based um I don't know if you can get it anywhere else but again I got this from um GNC and basically it's one of those little things that have like the look this one is done but they have different flavors and it has like different packets they have the packets in there and you would basically put the packet in about 16 ounces i believe of water shake it up it, it works just like the liquid iv if you're familiar with liquid iv so definitely keep yourself hydrated not just at five five months not just at one month not just at nine months not even just after you have the baby um, you want to keep yourself hydrated, especially if you're going to be breastfeeding as well. Um, and this is a very good way to do that. Um, drinking, um, drinking Gatorade maybe. Also um, taking in fruits that are very water soluble, such as um, cantaloupes and watermelon. Definitely, definitely. Uh, when I found out I was pregnant also, I didn't waste a lot of time to add um, hydration or moisture to my skin or my belly my belly so with odiria i did get stretch marks um they never really went away but they weren't as bad so i didn't want to add more stretch marks um with this pregnancy so i started with the moisture like very early um now this is not what i started off with i started off with another um belly balm i'll try to see if i can link it here or put the picture up here when that ran out um i picked this one up and honestly between those two so yeah so this is what i use this is what i've been using towards the tail end of my pregnancy but in the beginning it was another different belly balm between that as well as adding this so when i'm taking so after i take a shower and you can actually do it like two or three times a day um so after i take a shower i would basically rub the balm or the cream as well as this oil on my belly so basically keeping my belly hydrated so i can avoid those um those extra stretch marks you can put it also on your breast area you can also put it on the sides of your um your belly you can also put it on your buttocks area anywhere that you know that you're going to be kind of stretching um you can add the those those bombs to it um now 
by the time you're five, six, your teen, by the time you're about six or seven months, you probably decided if you're gonna have a baby shower or not. For this time around, we decided we didn't wanna do the baby shower. Um, for me, I just feel like um, it's, yeah, it's nice to have like family gatherings and things like that, but the purpose, I believe, for the baby shower is to kind of, you know, get gifts and things like that. And a lot of times we get so caught up in the ambiance of the baby shower that to me, I feel like you spend more money planning the baby shower than what the whole purpose of the baby shower is so uh, in my mind I was like okay well if anybody's gonna be gifting us anything they know where we live they know my cash app um and and that was just it for real like people were still going on to my Amazon um store not storefront but the Amazon registry um I had friends that you know would send money over family um that gave or helped any way they could so I didn't need a baby shower to do that um, and anything else that we didn't get you kind of figure out what you need along the way um, so by the time you're five or six months seven months you're kind of deciding if you want a baby shower if not then you start looking at things that you want to get but you know I realized especially with my second child you don't need to kind of you don't need to kind of create this list of things some of the time you're just kind of spending over spending money your baby especially the first few months they're so simple they eat, they sleep, they, and that's that. You know, you got some other things that might you might want to get to kind of make things more comfortable for you or convenient for you, but they're very simple. So all that extra stuff that I see like people kind of going crazy to buy, half the time you don't even really need it. We can talk about that in another time because I'm trying to like, you know, just kind of get like the basics of things in here. Um, you want to look into, um, creating a birth plan and start looking at your checklist now I printed this off of like just Google um and you can do the same um or you know if you have a birthing class they might have a list for you you also um by the time you're looking at six seven months you want to start looking at your birth suite like where you're going to be having your baby at that's associated with your OBGYN kind of doing um making your making your uh appointments to go see the suite and things like that those will be the time to do that but once you start getting your newborn checklist it kind of makes things a little bit easier about things that you need things that you probably don't really need but the newborn checklist kind of it kind of like iron out things and streamline things for you so that you're not over over buying or anything like that um also the um you may want to also start looking at your hospital hospital checklist as well especially once you start getting into like seven eight months because um, by the time you start reaching into you know eight eight and a half months nine months you may want to start looking into packing your hospital bag because especially if it's your second child you don't know when that baby's gonna say hello I'm here um, so it's like for me um, Messiah ended up coming like three weeks before he was due um, we were hoping he would at least get a like you know uh, 39 weeks but you know he came in at 37 weeks so um that could be due to a lot of things it could just be due because it's, it's your second child in my case I think I was just kind of stressing myself out a lot about a lot of things that I didn't need to stress, my, stress myself out about I wasn't sleeping as much I just wasn't doing a lot of healthy things during this pregnancy so I think that kind of caused um uh you know the early early labor to kind of like speed itself up um especially not sleeping and just things like that but anyways create a new create or look into a newborn checklist create a birth plan that you can kind of discuss with your with your um with your provider um so these things would be like you know labor preferences what do you want when you um when, when you're going into labor pain relief do you plan on getting an epidural do you plan on just going natural um, any other medications, baby monitoring, do you want it to be continuous, do you want it to be intermediate, um, do you want to have the freedom to walk around, um, who do you want in the room with you, who is the, your emergency contact, so these are things that you want to look into when you are creating your, um, your, your birth plan and things like that. I want to kind of make sure that I tap into everything um, before we start going into postpartum because postpartum for me is what was kind of the most important. Um, well, I mean, of course, creating a healthy environment inside the belly for your baby is just, just as important as well. 
but things get serious after the baby is here so we're gonna go into that oh um so deciding what you want to do as far as the the um placenta and the cord um research do that on your own i can't tell you what to do but i can tell you that you have different options if you are thinking about doing um like the cord um cord thing you would definitely want to do that like months in advance um they can be a little costly depending on what your but you know what your budget is or your finance situation is so at least you can know ahead of time what you're looking into plus also the reason why you need to know if you're going to go through the cord um cord banking ahead of time is because by the time when you labor they should already be there taking the cord because it it there's so much important things in that cord that you need to be able to to uh you need to basically be able to kind of make sure that your blood and everything is on point so waiting it, it a few hours after birth it's not gonna help or even a few minutes after birth like they need to be able to get that cord immediately so they can bank it and freeze it and do what they need to do um so that you're able to have it in the future if case you need it for uh, for other health things that we could talk about that at another time again that's a lot to kind of discuss in this video but um other things you could kind of look into if you don't want to go into cord banking is um or you can just kind of let the hospital have the cord if you don't care too much about that but you can also look into creating um placenta capsules i did this with um orderia i wanted to do the cord banking this time but again thing he ended up coming a little bit earlier than i expected but anyways um i just ended up getting the placenta to turn into capsules which you can take um which has a lot of great benefits as well um i this time around i went through south florida placenta services um which was somebody we found online um before i when i did with odiria i actually went through someone that was associated with the birthing center that um that we used and either way um i just think that it had a lot of benefits benefits of being able to use, use the placenta some people do traditional things they um you know ceremonial things they bury the placenta or whatever the case is it's up to you um but that is something you want to think about before kind of going into labor if there's anything that i miss i'll probably try to you know squeeze it in towards the ending of the video because i want to go into postpartum all right so there's a lot of things that you're going to want to go ahead and get you want to be comfortable um because things will get uncomfortable after you give birth um but the main thing that i do want you to Kind of put in your mind is that don't kind of pressure yourself to kind of get back to normal like snap back like people be putting on the internet because a lot of times that's definitely not what it is and everybody everybody's bodies is different as well um so most importantly keep yourself healthy keep your baby healthy and keep your like your environmental your social environment um your personal environment healthy as well because between you and your spouse between you and your partner things can kind of get crazy too especially if you're sleep deprived and things like that anyways um packing your hospital bag um a lot of the things the hospital is going to give you anyways so i wouldn't go cr too crazy about pack packing a lot of things but just kind of things to keep you comfortable like clothing um snacks make sure your partner is on the same page about snacks that you want to eat afterwards you want to have like you know this grand meal or if you just want to have the hospital meals um it's up to you anyway so after you give birth you may um tear or i don't think they do the cutting anymore um this time around like i tore one like i only needed, needed one stitch which was a blessing with odiria i needed like six or seven stitches it was so scary um i wanted to make sure i was like on point with things i needed to keep myself com comfortable because it was so scary like the first couple of days after you give birth um going to the bathroom was like the scariest thing so this time around it wasn't that scary I actually um went to the bathroom like a day after with odiria i was like three days in before i decided okay i had to use the bathroom all right you guys so forgive me if this video looks a little di this part of the video looks different and if i look a little sleep deprived but um that's because i am i had to re-record this part again because the whole time that i recorded for some reason that part of the footage just got lost anyways i'm gonna try to pick up where i left off um without further ado so again 
um, when you, after you give birth, you may or may not tear your um, provider may cut you, which I don't think they need to do that anymore. But if they do, you might get stitches. And to me, that was one of the scariest parts after giving birth was having to use the bathroom, wiping, you know, the normal thing that you do when you use the bathroom. Um, yeah, it, it was kind of nerve wracking for me. But this time around, I came prepared. I was like, okay, I did my research and things like that. At the hospital, they make you what's called a peri bottle. Um, I got my own and I used the hospital's version as well, but this one I like because it's from the company Frida. I got this from Target and basically it does the same thing your regular peri bottle does, but this one you actually can put it upside down and the water will come down this tube and come up. You just squeeze. In the peri bottle, all you're pretty much using is water most of the time. If you want to go ahead and put like a light cleanser, you want to put witch hazel in there that can you can do that as well but you want to put just a little bit majority of it is water when you're cleaning your down below except for the back part but when you're cleaning your down below you don't want to put too much products there because i can throw out your ph water should be sufficient but if you want to put a little bit of cleanser to kind of you know help the process you can do that but again um peri bottles was definitely helpful um, because wiping down there is not going to be the best thing to do the first couple of days, especially if, you're, if you have stitches um, and things like that. So the peri bottle is going to be your friend for the first couple of days. Um, I also did pick up this um, per perineal foam healing foam. Um, you can use it for your badge and your tush. Um, and you just use a little bit of it. I use it in my peri bottle when I'm taking a shower as well as when I use the, the restroom area. Um, yeah, so it's been the same company, Frida. Now, you guys talking about being nervous about using the bathroom the very first couple of days. Um, so with Oderia, I had hemorrhoids. I had hemorrhoids, but with Messiah, I had hemorrhoids up the wazoo. And it didn't come until a couple of days after. So I, I thought I was just like, you know, doing that. I was like, okay. So, you know, I'm superwoman. Like, yeah, I did this. My body started kicking my butt the next couple of days. So I didn't start feeling the, the aftermath of labor until like day three, four, five. And hemorrhoids was definitely one of them. And what saved my life is, you got it, Preparation H. Now they have different brands and companies that offer these hemorrhoids creams. Um, but again, I got this one. I got it from Target. You can, I'm sure you can get it from most areas. If you want to do an Amazon, you know, drop off or whatever you can also get them as well but yes this was this was a lifesaver basically so with the hemorrhoids if you don't know um anytime you strain let's say for example you are um you know you're, you're tight you, you haven't used the bathroom in a couple of days and you're, you're trying to use the bathroom but you're kind of like pushing you're straining that can cause you to get hemorrhoids basically the hole back there um will pretty much come on the outside yeah TMI, but it's, it's, it's what happened. It's part of the process, especially with giving birth. Um, so I had hemorrhoids um, and it was so bad. So I definitely had to get my hand on some sort of relief and this was that. Um, in addition to that, um, I did also get me some medicated wipes. You can get, you can obviously see I got this from Target because I got the Target brand. Um, they are supposed to be compared to the Preparation H um, brand. Basically, you know, when I use the bathroom, um, whether it, whether I'm using it, um, whether I'm using the bathroom on either you know, one number one or number two, after I'm done, I would basically use the wipes to kind of like it's medicated, so it should do its due diligence as a wipe as well as it's being medicated. Um, in addition to those medicated wipes, whenever I would um, use the bathroom and I change with my pads. I would basically add my on my new pads. I would add these medicated pads, which is basically little circles that have that's drenched in um, witch hazel. Um, so basically, you know, I would put the pad on and then put the pads three um, three of these little medicated pads. I'll put one in the front, one in the middle, one in the back, and it's supposed to help with relief of the pain from the hemorrhoids. Um, now. Uh, you can also do what most people talk about, which is called a padsicle, which is you get like your regular pad, you drench it with witch hazel, well not drench it, but you put witch hazel on there and you can put some aloe vera gel on there as well. You fold it, put it back in the wrapper, you put it in the freezer, of course, 
you want to keep your hygiene on point with your freezer because other people I'm sure are sharing the freezer with you so I would be basically put the pads in like in a plastic bag and then put it in the freezer so it's like not to be touching the foods and things like that in your freezer but that's also very helpful um, while we're on the subject of pads um, what I ended up getting was um, these disposable um, undies and basically they work just like the undies that like the pins um, that, you, that the you know older community would wear or people that have leakage not only for older people but people who have leakage can wear the pins so it works just like that like a pad and every time you use the bathroom you would change out the underwears but the underwear basically works like a two-in-one you don't have to wear a pad and underwears it does both um so yeah, that was helpful. And the hospital is probably gonna give you some as well. But I ended up getting a couple for myself so that when I got home, I had them. And then as your your period, because after you labor, of course, you're still gonna be giving off blood. You're still gonna be having probably slight blood clots and things like that given. And that's why you wanna start off with something heavy and that's more protective like the disposable undies. And then kind of like wean off into like regular pads and then um, penny liners. So penny liners that I picked up was this. You don't have to pick this one up. Um, I got this from Target, I think, or Walmart. And I just picked it up because um, there was 80 in here. It was not that expensive. And it also had, um, it said no harsh ingredients. And usually when I pick up pads, I usually like to get the organic cotton ones um, or things I said that there's not like a lot of, you know, dangerous chemicals on the pad. So that's why I picked that one up. No specific rhyme or reason. Um, the next thing I want to go ahead and talk about is waist training. So in my culture, we do something called the bane, and which is basically called the bath. Um, it's usually done by your mom, grandma, or just women in your village that you know helps with the postpartum part of your journey. And basically, they will basically boil you like certain leaves. I don't know entirely what those leaves are. I do have to learn about it myself because eventually I'm gonna probably have to do it for Odaria. But basically, um, you boil these. Um, concoction of leaves you can put um, alcohol like you know slight alcohol in the water as well and basically and also I think my mom used um, like um, the sour oranges as well and basically the heat of the um, that boiled leaves um, you use that to basically shower with so they'll be you know showering you with the leaves and then afterwards you can sit on a bucket of those same leaves and allow the heat and the steam to kind of like enter your insides it's supposed to basically heal you um from the inside and also kind of like pull down the blood and the blood clots because you don't want them to stay in there and that's what's going to kind of help your, your tummy to get back um and rearrange itself back to where it needs to go so what will help with that also while you're doing the bang because you only do that for like three to five days i believe um, you're also going to go ahead and waist train. So after you've taken the shower, when you put your clothes on, you're going to waist train. Now when you waist train, you also want to do something that's comfortable because if you're nursing, if you, you know, you just gave birth, you want to be comfortable. So when you're waist training, you don't want to be passing out because you're doing it so tight. You're doing it as, as much as your belly can allow. And then as your belly, as your belly contracts and it kind of goes back to as close to normal as it can get, um, then you can kind of like tighten it up a little bit more. Now you can get the waistbands or the belly bands, however you want to call it, postpartum, um, tummy bands, whatever, almost anywhere. Um, I stay in South Florida, so most of our malls, we got the mommies and the kiosks and stuff like that. Or if you go to like down in the area called Hialeah, where they sell um, like undergarments and things like that. Or um, if they sell like lingerie and things like that, you will usually find um, waist trainers and things like that. So you can go there. I got this three-in-1 um, from Amazon. I'll try to link link it or show the, the, the description of the picture somewhere here or in the um, description box. But yeah, you can get them almost anywhere. Some of the girlies on Instagram sell waist trainers. So which, whichever you can afford is convenient for you or you have access to, definitely you can go ahead and do that. Now while we're talking about nursing, um, if you are nursing, if you're breastfeeding, then definitely want to go ahead and make sure you get um, like nursing pads. Um, I got these. One of them I think I got off of Amazon and the other one I got from Target. But so basically with this one, just regular nursing pads um, you use. And you use this because you want to avoid your the leakage of your tatas to be showing on your shirt. 
This one does the same thing, only difference is this one has cooling gel on there. Um, so it helps if your nippies are a little agitated. Um, I think that's pretty much it. If there's anything else that I did miss, I will try to see if I can put it in the description box below. Um, I wanna make sure I share these things with you because baby, <laughs> healing with Odiria, or after having Odiria gave me a run for my money. And of course, I didn't have the luck, you know, the access to TikTok and all that other good stuff that I have now. Um, and I was a first time mom learning about all these things. So I wanna go ahead and share this with you or somebody who might be, you know, might be, might have been going through the same thing I was going through at that time. Um, the last thing I wanna go ahead and share with you guys is to make sure you do your due diligence when it comes down to like things like finances and stuff like that because you know, having a child can put a strain on on your pockets, on your finances. If you don't have, any, you know, adequate insurance, if you don't have, um, you know, some money saved up. In my case, I didn't do my due diligence. I figured that most jobs kind of offered the luxury of certain things because um, that's what I experienced with Odaria. And I figured, again, most jobs do the same. That's in the same field. And I had to learn the hard way that a couple of weeks, a couple of months before going into maternity leave that my job would not be paying me for the time that I was out. So yes, I had unpaid maternity leave with my job that I've been with for four years. So needless to say, I was very upset, um, very emotional because I'm like, okay, well, what am I gonna do? Um, and there was just a lot going on around that time. So if I didn't have like the money saved up, if I didn't have like the passive income coming from certain other areas, then I would basically be a out ass out you know so make sure you do your due diligence looking to short-term disability ahead of time especially if you're planning if you're planning there's no excuse these are things that you should be looking for before you decide to make that decision now, if it just happened um this happened then you know it is what it is but i'm telling you this ahead of time so you don't have to worry about going through what i went through so make sure you look into your what your company offers look into what other companies offers out there because you don't always have to go through your company to get 401ks and things like that um but yeah that's it you guys i hope you guys enjoyed this if there's anything look at the description box make sure you share this video with somebody else you know that may need to hear this all right peace